everybody, Sean from Movie Assault here, and it is time once again for another video. This time around, it is episode 12 of the Halloween 15 for 2024. And this time out, I wanted to take a look at 1990's The Guardian, which was directed by William Friedkin. This is the Screen Factory Blu-ray that I picked up not too long ago and that I watched for this review. And uh, I remember when this movie came out in 1990, I was actually working at uh, a theater when it uh, came out, and I remember the marketing campaign. I, it couldn't say enough that it was from the director of The Exorcist, the original Exorcist, William Friedkin. And it wasn't until I watched the film last night that I noticed that the opening credits actually seem to be in the same font as The Exorcist, or at least something that looks exactly like them. Uh, whether it's a coincidence or not, I, I'm not sure, but uh, they really, really pounded home that uh, this is the return to the horror genre from the director of The Exorcist. Unfortunately, um, it's not working with the same type of script that uh, Friedkin had when he was working with William Peter Blatty's uh, The Exorcist, but he's working here from a script by Dan Greenberg, uh, Stephen Volk, and himself. He did some rewrites on it because I guess Stephen Volk had a nervous breakdown doing the rewrites for this. Um, and this was based on a novel called The Nanny by Dan Greenberg. Um, how well it follows the, the book, I don't know. This tells the story of a young couple, the Sterlings, um, Phil and Kate Sterling, played by Dwyer Brown and Carrie Lowell. They've just moved to California because Phil has gotten a job uh, out there and he's making some serious money. They get a really nice house and um, as they're adjusting to their new home, uh, Kate informs Phil that she's pregnant and she also wants to, I guess, go back to work pretty quickly after she has the baby. So they look for a nanny, to, a live-in nanny to take care of their kid, Jake, when he's finally born. And so they go through the process of looking for a nanny and they find what they think is the perfect one and she gets killed. <laughs> Um, so the next one up is Camilla, played by Jenny Se Seagrove, and she settles in. She's perfect with Jake. She has a real rapport with the family. She's almost too perfect. Um, but what the Sterlings don't realize is that Camilla happens to be a druid tree worshiper, and she's got an ulterior motive for getting into their house and having access to Jake because she wants to sacrifice little Jake to an evil tree in the backyard. And I've become aware of how many times I've tried to come up with an explanation or a, a synopsis of this film that doesn't sound totally ludicrous. It's actually way better than it sounds, um, but no matter how you slice it, it sounds really awful. But it is better than it sounds. Um, this is a movie that, um, while you're watching it, you're not expecting what you get. It came, even though it came out in 1990, it reminded me a lot of a, a mid-1980s horror film because there are copious amounts of gore in this movie, a lot of nudity, which was surprising. Um, and I guess for an early 90s film, uh, you know, some of those 80s traits ca carried over, but it just sort of surprised me because I wasn't expecting it from a, a movie about a, a, an evil tree. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's, uh, got some surprisingly good special effects. I think it's a movie about an evil tree would have to have some pretty decent effects, or you're probably going to think of it as a comedy, whether intentional or not. And this is a movie that is definitely not a comedy. It's really rather dark and sinister. Director William Friedkin and cinematographer John A. Alonzo, uh, they really put together some really atmospheric type shots. It's clear they're working with sort of a lower end budget, but they do manage to get some decent shots in this film. And the effects, like I said, are, are decent. It's interesting to note that Sam Raimi was originally attached to direct this film. Uh, and some of the special effects kind of have an Evil Dead feel to them. I don't know if that's because Sam Raimi was originally attached to direct. He, he, he left the film to go work on Darkman which, of course, is an excellent film, also from 1990. But um, I don't know if it's just a coincidence. There's very similar type effects work on this film, or if it's 
it's is it a coincidence or is it was it a, a result of Raimi working on the film? I don't know. Uh, he does not receive any credit on the film whatsoever. So I I don't know. I just thought it was kind of an interesting observation to make. But uh, the special effects are interesting, especially for what looks to be a limited budget. Um, so I can't really say too too much about the film without spoiling a lot of stuff. But it is a lot better than I'm making it sound. Uh, it's not spectacular by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, the performances overall are pretty good. Jenny Seagrove, who plays Camilla, the druid tree worshiper, she is really the most effective performer in the film because she's got this warm exterior. She's got these icy blue eyes, um, and she's really she can go from giving you this warm, welcoming smile to then this piercing, ice-cold stare like that. And she's really effective. Uh, Carrie Lowell and Dwyer Brown are effective in their roles as the parents. They're not really required to do much other than seem really concerned about their kid and dote on the kid in every other scene. Um, so it doesn't really, you know, stretch the limits of their thespianism, but uh, it's it's all that's really required of them. I think the only performance in this film that seems sort of out of place is Saturday Night Live alum Brad Hall, who's in this. He plays their neighbor, who is also the architect who built their house. Uh, he just, I don't know, he just sort of feels wrong for the role, but he's nerdy enough that I guess he works. I don't know. He He's the only one that sort of feels off in this movie, but... Uh, I guess in the role that he is required to play, looking at him a certain way, he does work in the role. Um, but if I'm I'm stretching to find stuff to, that is really wrong with it, other than the fact that it's just sort of a really kind of a ludicrous plot, um, and it's it's a low budget film, but it's enjoyable for what it is. Uh, it's kind of silly, but it is worth watching. It's worth checking out, and I'll give The Guardian a six and a half out of 10. Um, early 90s gem. Um, you know, seek it out if you can, but uh, don't expect the greatest movie ever. But it's it's kind of endearing. It's fun. I think it would probably get better with multiple viewings. Um, and uh, yeah, there you go. The Guardian. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't fantastic. But it's worth watching. So there you go. That's my review of The Guardian. Thanks for watching. As always, if you've made it this far into the review, I appreciate your attention span. And if you've liked what you've seen so far, and not only this video, but the rest of the Halloween 15 or other videos that you've seen on my channel, please do consider subscribing. And as always, take it easy. Thanks for watching. See ya.